For he had one only daughter, about 12 years of age, and she lay but died. And as he went, the people thronged him. The woman had an issue of blood 12 years, which has spent all her living upon physicians. Neither could be healed of any came behind him and touched the border of his garment. And immediately her issue of blood stopped. And Jesus said, they sang about this just a moment ago, who touched me? When all denied, Peter and they were with him, said, Master, the multitude thronged thee and pressed thee, sayest thou who touched me? And Jesus said, Somebody had touched me, for I perceived that virtue has gone out of me. When the woman saw that she was not hid, she came trembling, and falling down before him, she declared unto him before all the people what cause she had touched him and how she was healed immediately. He said unto her, Daughter, well, she got upgraded there, didn't she? Yeah. Well, I go, it's just a woman coming. Yeah. Now she's a daughter. Yeah. Daughter, where was I? I forgot. Verse 48. <laughs> Be of good comfort, thy faith has made thee whole. Go in peace. While he had spake, there cometh one from the root of the synagogue's house, saying to him, Thy daughter is dead, trouble not the master. When Jesus heard it, he answered him, saying, Fear not, believe only, and she shall be made whole. When he came into the house, he suffered no man to go in, save Peter, James, and John, and the father and mother of the maiden. And all wept and bewailed her, but he said, Weep not, she is not dead, but sleepeth. They laughed him to scorn, knowing that she was dead. He put them all out and took her by the hand and called, saying, Maid, arise. And her spirit came again, and she arose straightway. He commanded to give her tofu and bean sprouts. <laughs> Decaffeinated coffee. <laughs> Gluten free stuff. <laughs> no, he said, give her meat. Amen. 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 Another reason to love Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> Their parents were astonished when he charged them they should tell no man what was done. We'll find our text back in verse 42, the last sentence of this verse, and I'd like for you to say it with me. We'll say it twice so we'll get it solidified in our hearts. The phrase is this, but as he went, the people thronged him. Help me now. But as he went, the people thronged him. Let's say it again. But as he went, the people thronged him. And I'm going to preach this morning for just a little while on what to do when you're stuck in traffic. <laughs> you ever been stuck in traffic? Nobody gets up in the morning and finds the app on their phone that says, here's where all the traffic is. That's the road I want. Yeah. We don't want that. Sometimes God puts us in a place, in a position. We can't go forward. We can't go backwards. We've got to stay right where he is. Father, I pray that you help us this morning or reveal truth to us in our hearts. Lord, when it's just said and done, in fact, before it's even started, we're we'll about Calvary. Huh. I already give you the glory and praise. It's not us. It can't ever be us. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. I've been traveling for a long time, and I've been stuck in traffic. And I found out there's three things that you want to do when you're stuck in traffic. Sometimes you want to make a U-turn. Now, that's illegal to do on the interstate with a bunch of rednecks. Look up here at me. You know, you know who you are. You didn't want to be back there to start with. So you left there to go somewhere else. And now you're going to turn around and go back where you didn't want to be? That's not too bright. Sometimes you not only want to make a U-turn, sometimes you want to take the wrong exit. Now you don't know what's off that exit. But you're tired of being in traffic. So you're going to take a chance. Get up on this thing you don't want to go back. Ever, our house out here is a bus. It's got a trailer behind it. I have four GPSs. One of the dash is the original equipment. It has the height, width, weight, and length of the coach pre-programmed into it. So it won't take me under a bridge that I can't fit under. Oh, yeah. Very important. Yeah, yeah. And the second one on the dash, it has some 
It's an aftermarket product, has some things on it some, that the other one doesn't have that I want, and so I have it on the dash. The third one is in my phone. Helps me find fuel and things like that. The fourth one is my wife. <laughs> <laughs> so I have four women telling me how to drive at any given moment. <laughs> you get off the wrong exit, you get to a bridge you can't get under. Yeah. Now you got about 70 foot of bridge up the road somewhere so you can get turned around. Right. In your life, you take the wrong exit. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. You're in a heap of trouble. Sometimes we'll make a U-turn. Sometimes we'll take the wrong exit. And sometimes, I wrote it down. Let me see what it is. Sometimes, we'll look for a shortcut. Yeah. yeah. Now, in my opinion, shortcuts aren't. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, try. You know, God's pretty old. We gotta help him out. Yeah. We just take the word "madness" off and yeah, yeah. it'll get big. Mm -hmm. Do you know that everything's big, not alive? Yeah, you're right. I passed the possum one day. He's dead. Three days later, I came back and he's still dead, but he's a lot bigger now. Yeah. yeah. So just because it gets big don't mean it's alive. You stay around, it's going to explode. Yeah. <laughs> I ain't got time. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. I want you to notice just a little bit of about 20 minutes of introduction, about 10 minutes of message. I know y'all are hungry. Most of you. Which is the first thing we ought to do. The Bible says in one of the companion gospels, it's mentioned in Matthew and also in Mark. Mark says Jesus got to go with him. Thank God for that. Amen. So he's brought to this possession, this place in his life, because this man with all these things in his life is now coming and kneeling at the feet of the Lord Jesus Christ. We saw that in message number one from Brother Adams, how that he knelt. The leper. Here's this man that's not a leper, but he's still got something in his life. What is it in your life? What, what place in your life are you stuck in traffic? Heartaches and troubles nearly always come in one of three ways. Physical problems, financial problems, or family. We can have these things in our life. And I'm not talking about being stuck out on Interstate 40. I'm talking about being stuck in a place in your life. You can't go forward or backwards or side to side. You can't do anything but wait on God to make his. The humility of the Pharisee. Romans number two, the horror of the parents. It is not right that children die before their parents. It's just not right. Our oldest son was nine when he went to be with the Lord. Got saved day day before he died. I had my school plan before. But it's still not right. He died before. And the horror of the parents is this that they've got this little girl. The Bible describes that she lays a dying. Somebody said, How sick is she? She dies. That's how sick she is. The unspeakable tears that they had to have shed for this problem. If you've not had a loved one close to you go away, whoever this is, could have said something like this. There I was, my friend. Yeah. I don't know how to tell you. Mm -hmm. yeah. But you're a little girl. Yeah. That's not easy. My daughter. Jay, I was your the day. You should have done something like this. She's just a little girl. She don't know what to do. You have failed your daughter. You know, society comes along and tries to tell us who's been at fault, who's yeah. failed. You either hugged too much or you wasn't hugged enough. Yeah. My daddy kissed me. Good 
get it flooded. The hateful proclamation, the father's daughter, the finality of death, and the failure of the divine. Jairus not only Jew failure daughter, but now there's nothing Jesus can do about it. Trouble on the master. The friend, it ain't over until he says it's over. And even when it's over and four days go by, it's still not over. I will say the Old Testament, they limited the Holy One of Israel. And that's what we are today. We put him in a box. If you can work between 11.30 and, and 12.05, 12.06, we'll be okay. But if it goes further than that, you've got to come back next week and work on our own. The healing presence. When he came to the house in verse 51, he suffered no man to go and say, Peter and James and John, the father and mother, the maiden, and all left to be well. But he said, Weep not, she is not dead, but sleepeth. Yeah. But acting the scorn, knowing that she was dead. You understand, these are paid mourners. Yeah. These are people that are paid to come to an occasion like this, weep and wail and howl. So they might have been Democrats, you know? <laughs> I didn't say they were, I said they might have been. <laughs> Put them all out in verse 54, took them by the hand, called Satan, so laid, arise, and their spirit came again. You see, Jesus doesn't look at death the way we look at death. We look at death as the really the final thing because we've not been on the other side. He says this, precious in the sight of the Lord is the yes, When a lady comes to the Wednesday night service and she's expecting a child, she's great a child, what, 10, 12, I mean, nine months? It's been a long time. <laughs> and people gather around her, mostly women, I thought you would have had this baby by now. I thought between Sunday night when he was here and Wednesday night, I thought for sure you'd have the baby. When are you going to have the baby? Now the baby's here, oh, but it's not here. We want to get our hands on the baby and hold the baby and look at the baby and say stuff like it's got somebody's eyes and somebody's hair. We want to get our hands And God is in heaven to say right now, I can't wait for the time to get back. I get my hands on it. I can hold it. We look forward to the birth of the baby. He looks forward to the death of the son. And he heals this little lady. One time more than that. I'm going to give you the message. What do you do when you're stuck in your I want you to remember three things if you write those down. Number one, I want you to notice this. He has mercy. He cares. <coughs> we left we left Florida five about five thirty Thursday evening. Been driving at night. When it gets hot, I drive at night because it's easier on my foot. And I drove to about Birmingham about two o'clock in the morning, laid down for several hours, three or four hours. Got up to come on in. About about an hour into my drive, a trouble light came on the dash to the bus. That's a hard ache that nobody knew, except bus drivers knew. A little hard. Got one on there right now. But... I quit listening to whatever I was listening to. I quit daydreaming. And I began to pray about that sorry, stinking, low down, hateful life. <laughs> Yeah. I had a piece of black electric tape. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That didn't solve the problem. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I did several things and prayed. Got here and shut it off and got the car out of the trailer. When I went back to start the bus to back in the end, the light was off. Got it. Was hey. I wore mercy real hard that day mm -hmm. on Friday. I worked mercy hard. Listen to me. I wore it out. When I got up Saturday, it was brand new. Uh, yeah. 
His mercy is new every morning. Amen. Amen. The saints of mercy. No, oh, wear it out. <laughs> wear it out. Ride it like a bar of mule. Amen. I mean, wear mercy plum to a dazzle. Every morning there'll be a new day. Hallelujah. Amen. That's good. Amen. He has mercy. Number two, he still does miracles. I've not only experienced miracles in my life, I've experienced entertaining angels that I didn't know was an angel until it was over. Yeah. For 19 years we've been, he's out of the bus for a long time, and 19 years we've had a, a Ford truck and pulled a 17 foot equipment trailer, all my life shoes and purses. <laughs> pulled into Arkadelphia, Arkansas to a truck stop, and the thing burst into flames. Jeannie bailed out of her side, and I got out of my side. No fire extinguisher. Coming down from where the fire was coming out from where the driver's left foot would be down there. Jeannie threw me a bottle of water, and I got it's not easy for a man my size to get under the steering wheel in front of that seat. I got the thing pulled out, poured the water on, and didn't do one thing to it. Backed out of that thing, out of that, hit my head on the steering wheel. When I turned around from the door, there stood a man with a fire extinguisher. He said, use this. I grabbed it out of his hand, got back in front of that wheel, sprayed that thing, sprayed it two or three times. Then I pulled that plastic back. It was hot. It was melted. It was easy to pull. I pulled it back, sprayed it real good, and handed it back to him. He took it, reached down there, and pulled it back on. The fire was all out. When I stood up, he was gone. Yes. Yeah. You'll never convince me that God.